Fight Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at FightBYPE.com. Fight is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, again, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh, my God, it went in. Cavaliers pull a hit by one. Log on to VipeVYPE.com. Good morning, because it's not noon yet, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome out to San Marcos, Texas, as we are here live to bring you game two between your Bowie Bulldogs and the San Marcos Rattlers. AJ Revel here, my partner in crime, Laura Starkey, was unfortunately unable to make it out today, so you will get to just deal with me and only me. I've been told she may tune in while she's at work, and if she is, just be sure to give her some grief for not coming out in this pivotal game two against the Rattlers. Uh, game one on Tuesday went the way of the Rattlers behind the outstanding performance by freshman freshman pitcher Reagan Shamel. The Rattlers ran away with that one by a score of 10 to four. Bulldogs coming in now with that. That puts them in a pretty solid contention for second place in district. Uh, Westlake and Lake Travis will battle it out next week, which will have an effect on that second, third place rankings. Uh, and we will take on the Hayes Rebels next week, which also will have contention currently. Lake Travis sits at the one spot, Bowie in the two, Westlake in the three, Hayes in the four, and San Marcos in the five spot. Top four are going to make their way into playoffs, so a pivotal game for both teams. If Bowie can come away with the win here this afternoon, that'll pretty much guarantee a playoff spot regardless of what happens next week against the Hayes Rebels. Uh, the Rattlers, unfortunately, are in a situation where they pretty much have to win out and they become big Bowie fans next week as they need Hayes to drop a few games if possible. Uh, it is First Responder Appreciation Day today here on the field, and we're going to send it out as our national anthem is about to be played right before first pitch. and stand for the playing of the national anthem. Let's play ball indeed. First time we got to hear that this season is it's usually just the anthem and we're on our way. Uh, but as I mentioned before the national anthem, folks, it's first responder day today here at the Rattler baseball field where you're thinking all of our first responders and they've come out. They've got the big police rescue tank for the San Marcos Police Department out for you. So bring the kiddos if you can make your way out. We're just down the road here from Austin and of course, you'll be able to catch a great baseball game. Uh, one thing I like to point out, though, is the Rattlers today are wearing their special police alternative uniforms uh, where they've got the San Marcos Police badge logo on their top left shoulder. And they have the name Copeland 
on the back of every single jersey in honor of Officer Kenneth Copeland, who unfortunately was killed in the line of duty back in December 4th, 2017, the first San Marcos police officer to die in the line of duty. So a nice way to honor him, a nice way to honor all of our first responders. A big thank you to every first responder out there, especially those tuning in, as we really, really do appreciate everything you do for our community, regardless of what you may see otherwise. So Bowie's getting ready here to bat. We'll get you their lineup here in a second. But defensively, for the Rattlers, on the mound is going to be number 14, Tito Santos. He'll get the call to take over first and take his first crack at the Bulldogs. Selvin Anderson, catcher. Over at first base is Stephen Wilder. Second base is going to be Cutler Webb. Third base, Reagan Schomel, who we saw him on Tuesday up on the mound with an outstanding showing. Shortstop, Johnny Pardo. Left field, Moses Alva. Center field, Cannon Webb. And right field, Ryan Hicks. Batting order for your Bowie Bulldogs is going to bring up first, number three, Thanio Bright. Right behind him is going to be shortstop Mason Winters with Brody Miller batting third. Uh, as far as our camera angle goes, folks, I do apologize for the view we have here as we are right in front of the batter's circle for the Bulldogs. And I'm unable to get really any closer as that first pitch from Santos goes right by Anderson. Let me try to turn our camera just a smidge here. But due to the power location, they've got me over here on the third baseline. That looks good. So it's one ball, no strikes here for Bright. And here's the next pitch from Santos. A swing and a high fly towards right field. As Hicks is going to get underneath that, he'll bring it in. And that'll be out number one here to start the first inning. And again, folks, I do apologize as... Miss Starkey was unable to make it here, so I'll be doing all of the above, including updating our scoreboard, and I'll do my best to keep everybody informed. Uh, Santos gets set to face off against number seven, Mason Winters. Here's the first pitch from Santos. Fast ball gets called for strike one. Count goes 0-1, and, and I'll call the uh, pitch as much as I can, and no guarantees, though, folks, as... My view is exactly what you see in your camera. <laughs> As here's the next pitch from Santos. That one looked like it was a little bit high, but that's going to hit the zone there for strike two. As Winters goes down early in the count, 0-2. Oh so no balls, two strikes, and one out here for Winters. As Santos gets set, here's the pitch. As that one's going to be in the dirt in front of home plate. Anderson keeping a nice, nice job keeping in front of him. Excuse me. That'll be ball one for Winters. Count goes one and two. So one ball, two strikes, and one out here for Winters. No runners on as Santos gets set. Here's the pitch. A swing and a high fly towards right field. Again, Hicks is going to run to it. It's going to go foul. We'll see if he can get underneath it, and he does. And Hicks getting his workout in early for the Rattlers. That's going to be out number two, another fly out towards right field to him, which is going to bring up number 15, Brody Miller. Next up, number 15. Miller ceremoniously took the big hitter title from John Estrada on Tuesday as he hit the first home run for the Bulldogs of district play against the Rattlers. And he looks to hopefully do that again against Santos as here's the first pitch. It's going to be a high fastball. Gets called for ball one for Miller. Count goes 1-0. Oh. Miller gets set, one ball, no strikes, and two outs, no runners on here, top of the first for the Bulldogs, as Santos gets set, here's the pitch. Another high fastball gets called for ball two, count goes 2-0. Oh. So two balls, no strikes, and two outs here for Santos, as Miller gets set. Santos getting the call, and here's the 2-0 pitch. A swing and a high fly foul. It's going to go past the first baseline behind the Rattler dugout. That'll be strike one for Miller. Count goes two and one. So two balls, one strike, and two outs. Santos getting ready. Here's the pitch to Miller. A swing and a miss by Miller. They're going to say he got a piece of that one. Regardless, it'll be strike two for Miller. Count goes even now, two and two. 
As Miller gets set, it's two balls, two strikes, and two outs, no runners on. Patrick Colopy is going to be on deck. He'll be set to bat next as Miller can make his way on base. It's a swing and another liner foul down the first baseline. Count will stay two and two, and we'll just do it again. Miller having a good day on Tuesday. He went two for four with a two RBI double in the first, and of course that home run in the fifth with a couple flyouts. There's the pitch. That one's going to be, it looks like outside the zone. That'll be ball three, and Miller doing a good job of working the pitch count. It's going to be go full now, three and two. So three balls, two strikes, and two outs with no runners on here for Brody Miller. Here's the pitch from Santos. A swing and a nice fly over. First drops right in front of right field. That's going to be a base hit for Brody Miller. And the Bulldogs showing some life here with two outs, top of the first, which is going to bring up number 13, Patrick Colopy, up to the plate. Colopy having a rough go at it on Tuesday. He went 0 for 3 with two ground outs to short and a strikeout looking in the first. So trying to turn his luck here against the Rattlers as they've pretty much had his number all day on Tuesday. So Santos getting set. Brody Miller is over at first. And here's the first pitch from Santos. That's going to be in the dirt. Anderson, man, doing a great job of keeping that in front of him. Making sure Miller has to stay true over at first. That one's going to hit the dirt, though. That'll be ball one. Count goes 1-0. and oh. So one ball, no strikes, and two outs here for Colopy as he gets set. Santos ready. Here's the pitch. A swing and a miss by Colopy. That'll be strike one. Count goes even now, 1-1. One and one. So one ball, one strike, and two outs here for Colopy. My favorite battle of the... Day is the pitcher's duel that we get to see here. Here's the pitch from Santos. A swing and a foul ball goes into the stands behind for strike two. Count goes one and two. So one ball, two strikes, and two outs for Patrick Colopy. As he awaits it from Santos. John Estrada is going to be on deck. He'll be batting next if Colopy can make his way on pace. So here's the pitch from Santos. It's going to be outside the zone. That'll be ball two for Colopy. Count goes even now, two and two. As we are right next to the Bowie dugout, folks, and you get to listen to the jeers and the cheers from the <laughs> dugout. As Santos gets set. Here's the 2-2 pitch to Colopy. That one's going to be, looks like a little too low and outside the zone. Colopy working the count full now, three and two. And a nice job by him and Miller so far of burning some pitches from Santos as it's three balls, two strikes, two outs with one runner on. As Santos gets set, here's the pitch to Colopy. A swing and a bouncer is going to go down the third baseline. That's going to stay fair as Miller's going to round second. Goes to Jedi, get him the go ahead, and he's holding him true, but it's going to be a double for Colopy as he'll make his way over to second. Miller will make his way to third, and here comes John Estrada up to the plate. I was told he took his big bat title that was taken away personally. He's looking to change his luck here. As the field here in San Marcos is meant for some big hits. It's 325 at each corner with 385 down the center near the big green monster that they have there. Estrada though went 0 for 4 on Tuesday. So looking to turn his luck a bit again as the past two have done just that as he looks to face off with two runners in scoring position and two outs. Uh, Santos gets set. Here's the first pitch to Estrada. A swing, and he gets a piece of that one. It's going to go right behind him foul. That'll be strike one. Count goes 0-1. So no balls, one strike, two outs, and two runners on here for John Estrada. Brody Miller's over at third. Patrick Colopy's at second. As Santos gets set, here's the pitch. That's a fastball that gets called for strike one, or excuse me, strike two. Count goes 0-2, and, and Estrada falling behind early in the count, 0-2. Santos, one strike away from getting out of this inning and getting a sigh of relief as he leaves two runners in scoring position as here's the pitch. And that's going to be a foul ball, and it's a floater towards first. Wilder is able to run up and get to it 
That's going to be a pop-up. That'll be out number three, and that'll do it for the Bulldogs. They come away with two hits, no errors, and two runners left on. And that's it, though. So something they got to clean up there is leaving those runners on. For the San Marcos Rattlers, set to lead off is going to be number 21, Cannon Webb. Cutler Webb will be batting second. Selvin Anderson batting third. Johnny Pardo batting fourth in the cleanup spot. Moses Alva right behind him. Reagan Shamel batting sixth. Stephen Wilder behind him. Major Pellian batting eighth. And right fielder Ryan Hicks will be batting ninth to round out the order. As you see Patrick Colopy. I guess you really can't see. I can probably turn the camera a smidge here so you can hopefully get some picture uh, views here, folks. There we go. So Colopy's going to get the call here. Game two, as always, to go up and show off against the Rattlers here to lead off. Bottom of the first. As we'll get this scoreboard updated. So again, folks, next week, our final week of district play is the Bulldogs look to take on the Hayes Rebels. And for those who are slightly new to our broadcast or haven't listened, it's a special broadcast, a special week. All right, folks, sorry about that. Thank you. Looks like we are hopefully back up and running. We are blinking, though. We might be a little bit too. There we go. Sorry about that, folks. It looks like it was just a little too hot out here for our computer as number 20, Selvin Anderson, makes his way up to the plate. That first pitch gets called for strike one. Quick recap, though, of what you missed here, folks, is that pitch will get called for ball one. Uh, Kenan Webb got caught looking for a strikeout for out number one. Cutter Webb drove the count full and hit a liner towards second as Garcia was able to bring that one in for out number two. And that brings up Selvin Anderson now with two outs. Here the bottom of the first for the Rattlers. As that one gets called for ball three. Count goes three and one here for Colopy. It's three balls, one strike, and two outs. No runners on with Selvin Anderson up to the plate for the Rattlers. As Colopy gets set, and here's a 3-1. A swing and a high fly ball. Starkey's trying to get underneath it, and it's going to barely make it over the fence there. That'll be strike two. Count goes full now, three and two. So three balls, two strikes, two outs, and no runners on. Selvin Anderson again up to the plate here for the Rattlers. Anderson went 0 for 2 with a couple pop outs towards second on Tuesday as he hits that one. That's a high fly towards center field. And it looks like Winters is getting underneath it. And Winters is able to bring that one in. And that'll be out number three. As Colopy is able to retire the side. One, two, three here for the Rattlers. That'll do it for the first inning. So again, folks, I apologize about an interruption there in our broadcast, but we should be back up and streaming. <laughs> As Vipe is working on my wonderful computer that has a tendency to overheat when I'm out here. Even though it's a cool 80 degrees out, the wind's blowing, as you can see from our flags up top, and that's okay, though. As Tito Santos is gonna make his way back up out to the mound, so first inning's done, folks, and I didn't get a chance to uh, thank our sponsors here to start out, and we'll go ahead and do that now, and we'll, of course, give a big shout-out to our spring sports sponsor, Academy Sports and Outdoors. For all the ways you love to play, Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easier than ever to gear up and have fun out there. It's Academy Sports and Outdoors, our Vibe Live spring sports sponsor. Blah, a lot of S's there. Set to lead off for the Bowie Bulldogs is number 24, Travis Starkey. Starkey went 0 for 1 in Tuesday's game with a strikeout looking. He was walked in the third and was able to reach. But outside of that, folks, again, a pretty unproductive day. Again, a nice showing.
by freshman pitcher Reagan Schommel. And Starkey gets set. Baby brother to our co-host Laura Starkey, who isn't there, and, or not here at least. <laughs> So Starkey gets set to face off against Tito Santos. And Santos gets set, and here's the first pitch to Starkey. Uh, that one's going to be just a little bit too low, it looks. That'll be ball one. Count goes 1-0. and oh. So one ball, no strikes, and no outs here for Starkey. As he's the leadoff man here at the top of the second. Here's the pitch. That one's going to hit the zone. That'll be strike one. Count goes even now, 1-1. One and one. So one ball and one strike here for Travis Starkey. As Santos gets set, here's the pitch. Swing and a chopper goes over the fence behind him, foul. That'll be strike two, count goes one and two. So one ball, two strikes here for Starkey. As he is set and ready to go, Santos gets the call. And here's the one-two pitch. And Starkey gets a piece of that one. It's a little bouncer back towards Santos. It gets past him all the way over to second as Cutter Webb's able to get that one. The toss to Walter is in time. And that'll be out number one. Next up is going to be number one, Ben Merriman, up to the plate. Merriman went 0 for 2 on Tuesday. Two strikeouts, one looking and one swinging. As he looks to face off against Santos here in game two, as here's the first pitch. That one's gonna be in the dirt and gets behind Anderson. That'll be ball one, count goes one and oh. Danny Rodriguez will be on deck. He'll be set to bat next. As there's a the pitch, a swing and a liner towards right center field. That's going to bounce and roll all the way to the fence. Merriman's going to round second. He'll make his way over to third, and he'll get held up at third with a triple. As that one gets right by the third baseman, he'll still stay true as he loses his helmet between first and second. But that's a double for Ben Merriman. Excuse me, a triple. Ooh, a triple for Ben Merriman. And the Bulldogs are in business now with one out here. The top of the second, which is going to bring up number 17, Danny Rodriguez. Rodriguez didn't get the call on Tuesday, so we haven't seen him since game two against the Cavs, where he went 0 for 2 with a pop out and a ground out towards the pitcher. So with Ben Merriman, though, in scoring position, we'll see what he does here. As Rodriguez getting set. And for those listening, I'm told our, our video feed's a little choppy right now. So as soon as the inning's over, folks, I'll do a quick restart and hopefully get us back up and running as the first pitcher, Rodriguez. Going to be in the dirt for ball one and Anderson keeping it in front of him. So Merriman, who has been known to make his way to home on wild pitches, is going to have to sit tight at third. But it's one ball, no strikes, and one out here for Rodriguez. as Pardo comes up and gives some words of encouragement to Santos as he gets set. Here's the 1-0 pitch to Rodriguez. And that's going to be a fastball down the middle. I could see that here. That'll be strike one for Rodriguez. Count goes even now, 1-1. One and one. So one ball, one strike, and one out. Rodriguez set. Santos gets the call. He's set. And here's your 1-1 pitch. A swing and a miss by Rodriguez. That'll be strike two. Count goes one and two. Now Santos gets set. One ball, two strikes here for Rodriguez with one runner on. Here's the pitch as Rodriguez... Went for it, pulled back, but got a piece of it. It went foul. Count's going to stay one and two here for Rodriguez. As Merriman is still over at third. 
It's one ball. She's, yep, one ball, two strikes, and one out. Santos set, and here's the pitch to Rodriguez. As that's going to be in the dirt behind home plate. That'll be ball two. Count goes even now, two and two. So two balls, two strikes, and one out here. Rodriguez gets set. Santos. And Rodriguez is going to call a quick time and get reset. Matt Garcia is on deck. He'll be set to bat next right after Rodriguez. As he is in front of us getting warm as Santos with the 2-2 pitch, a swing and a chopper behind goes foul. Count's going to stay 2-2. Two two. Rodriguez in protection mode now at the plate as he's swinging at anything that might be deemed a strike. And the field out here in San Marcos, a beautiful turf as it's turf all around, including around home, except on the mound where they got a nice mound of dirt. The queen, as I've been told it's called, as that was going to be low and outside. That'll be ball three. Count goes full now, three and two. It's called the queen, and apparently it's protected like the queen, hence why they call it the queen. But a beautiful mound set up for our game this afternoon. As Santos gets set, it's three balls, two strikes, and one out for Rodriguez. He's ready to go. And Santos with the pitch. A swing and a liner towards short. A nice check by Webb, or excuse me, by Pardo, as he takes a look at Merriman to make sure he stays true. That'll be a 6-3 for out number two, which is going to bring up number two, Matt Garcia, up to the plate. We saw Matt Garcia, let's see here, it looks like game one against the Lake Travis Cavaliers as he went 0 for 2 with a strikeout looking and a ground out towards third. And again, Ben Merriman with the triple here with one out is still on third. As here's the first pitch to Garcia. That one's going to catch the zone. That'll be strike one. Count goes 0 and 1. So no balls in one strike here for Garcia. Santos gets the call. And here's the pitch to Garcia. And Santos is going to step off and call quick time. So we'll get reset here and do it again as it's no balls, one strike, two outs, and one runner on. Here's the pitch from Santos. A swing and a miss by Garcia. That'll be strike two. Count goes 0-2. So folks, after this third out, I'm going to go ahead and restart our stream here in a second, hopefully fix this video feed for you. I'll give you some directions here in a second as it's no balls, two strikes, and two outs. Matt Garcia is up to the plate. Tito Santos gets set. Here's the pitch. As that's going to be outside and in the dirt. And again, Anderson keeping that in front of him. Merriman getting antsy over there at third as he has to sit tight still as the count goes one and two. So one ball, two strikes, two outs. Santos with the one-two pitch. Garcia swings and it's a bouncer down the third baseline. Able to get to it is Santos. And the throw over to first is in time for out number three. So one hit, no errors, and one runner left on here in the top of the second for the Bulldogs. And that'll do it, folks. So again, I'm going to go ahead and restart, folks. Count to about maybe 60 seconds, 90 seconds or so. Our stream should be right back up and hopefully with a better video feed. But we'll be right back. All right, folks. And we're back up. It still seems to be a bit choppy, though, and I think it might be our Wi-Fi connection here at Rattler Baseball Field. I'm going to check and make sure that everything's cleaned up a little bit. Hopefully get everything closed that shouldn't be open. As Colopy. Looking to face off against number five, Johnny Pardo. That first pitch is going to be called for strike one. Count goes 0-1. Colopy with the pitch. Pardo gets a piece of that one. That's going to go foul. That'll be strike two. And quickly, count goes 0-2.
Colopy gets set with no balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch to Pardo. Pardo swings and gets a piece of that one. That's a deep fly ball towards center field and legging that one out and getting to it. Nice job is Daniel Bright. As RM's gonna say it wasn't caught. Coach Tegelia is not happy with that one as he's saying it was caught. Our umpire is saying no it wasn't. Bright able to come up with it, pulls it out of his glove. But he's gonna say it hit the ground. So that's gonna be a hit for Pardo. As for, yeah, that was a, uh, I mean, when you come up with it in your hand after hitting the ground, even if it, our umpire is saying it hit the ground before Bright was able to come up with it, but he did a barrel roll forward. I know you can't see it in our camera, folks, but a barrel roll forward and came up and pulled it out of his glove, but they're going to say no, and Pardo is going to reach first, and that's going to be a hit for the Rattlers, as we'll give Pardo a single on that one which is gonna bring up number nine, Moses Alva, as he faces off. That first one gets chopped foul, that'll be strike one. As Pardo gets set, Colopy ready to go. Here's the 0-1 pitch. As Pardo pull, excuse me, Alva pulls back. That'll be ball one, count goes even now, one and one. As Colopy gets set, here's the pitch to Alva. It's going to be a high fastball. Starkey's going to make a throw to, Col uh, to Rodriguez. It goes over his head, and Pardo is going to take off towards second on the wild pitch. That's going to be ball two for Alva. This count goes two and one. And this is one of those where an extremely questionable call by our umpire crew here. You know, you gotta, gotta be like a goldfish, right? Goldfish only remembers five minutes and then it's gone. You gotta forget it, you gotta move on. And it's two balls and one strike, a swing and a high fly. To, it's gonna go foul for Pardo is making a run for it. It's gonna be Miller, he can't get to it though. That'll be strike two, count goes even now, two and two. So two balls, two strikes, and no outs. One runner in scoring position for the Rattlers is Pardo's over at second. Moses Alva's up to the plate. Here's the 2-2 pitch, a swing and a high fly towards left center. And Bright catches that one. Is that one going to be called fair? Nope. Nope. He says that's an out. So that'll be out number one. No tag up though by Pardo as he stays over at second. And I, and I forget folks, you can't see it. Bright caught that one just right in the middle of the air. So there's no question that that was an out. As here comes number two, third baseman, Reagan Shomel up to the plate. Shomel was our starting pitcher on Tuesday. Was able to shut down the Bulldogs as he makes his way up to the plate now. Shomel going 0 for 3 on Tuesday, though, with two strikeouts and a ground out, hoping to change his luck as he faces off against Colopy. With one runner on, there's the pitch, a swing and a liner down the third baseline goes foul. Estrada unable to get to that one. Lucky that bounced foul. That'll be strike one. Count goes 0 and 1. So no balls, one strike, and one out here bottom of the second. As Colopy's facing off against Shomel. Shomel gets set. Colopy gets the call. Here's the pitch. That was gonna be a little bit too high. That'll be called for ball one. Count goes even now, one and one. 
So one ball, one strike, and one out here for Colopy. As he gets set, one runner on. Remember, Pardo's over at second. Shamel's ready. Here's the 1-1 pitch. That's another high fastball. That'll be ball two. Count goes two and one. So two balls, one strike. And one out. Colopy getting set. Here's the 2-1 pitch to Shamel. And swing, and Shamel gets a piece of that one. It goes foul behind him. That'll be strike two. Count goes even now, two and two. So two balls, two strikes, and one out. Shamel gets set. Colopy's getting the call. Here's your 2-2 pitch. As Colopy's going to step off for a second and get reset. Didn't like it. We'll do it again with two balls, two strikes, and one out. Colopy gets set. Quick check over at Pardo. Here's the pitch. A swing and a miss by Shomel. He'll go down swinging for out number two, which is going to bring up first baseman number 12, Stephen Wilder. Wilder having a pretty decent afternoon on, excuse me, evening on Tuesday. He went three for four, excuse me, two for three with one strikeout and two singles, including an RBI single late in the seventh. As Wilder takes a quick time, he's going to get reset. Colopy gets set. Here's the pitch. That one's going to be hit the zone, be called for strike one. Count goes 0 and 1. So no balls, one strike, and two outs. Wilder currently at bat. Johnny Pardo is still over at second as Colopy steps off and takes a look at Pardo. No throw made. He'll get reset and we'll do it again. As Colopy gets set, here's your 0 1 pitch to Wilder. A swing and Wilder gets a piece of that one. That's going to go behind him and foul into the cage. That'll be strike two. Count goes 0 and 2. So no balls, two strikes, and two outs. One runner on for the Rattlers as Colopy gets set. Here's your 0-2 pitch to Wilder. And that one's going to be high. That'll be ball one. Count goes one and two, and Colopy with a couple pitches to waste if he wants. Climbs the ladder there. Wilder, nice discipline, not going to make an offering. As we'll get reset. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Quick check over at Pardo. Here's your 1-2 pitch. A swing, and Wilder gets a piece of that one. That does go foul. Count's going to stay one and two. So one ball, two strikes, and two outs. As everybody gets reset. Here's the pitch from Colopy. A swing and a chopper towards Garcia at second. He gets that one. The throw to Rodriguez in time and a 4-3 out. And that'll do it for the second inning. So one hit, no errors, and one runner left on here for the Rattlers after that interesting call on Bright in the outfield. But that'll do it, folks, for the second inning. We're still knotted up at zero. And I'm going to do one more restart here, folks, try to get this camera cleaned up if I can. Again, folks, give me just maybe 60 seconds, and we should be right back. But you're listening to Bulldog Baseball right here on Vi All right, folks. Well, that was the last restart I'm going to do here this <laughs> afternoon for you. Again, I do apologize. I think the heat's getting to the computer here a little bit, and I think our Wi-Fi might have a say in this as well. But we'll make do, and you'll just get to listen to my wonderful voice here the whole time. As Santos looks to face off against the top of the order, Sanio Bright who's set to lead off here in the third for the Bulldogs as that first one goes by him for ball one. Count goes 1-0. and oh. Bright had a fly out towards right field, went foul, and Hicks was able to leg it out. As here's the 1-0 pitch. That one he gets a piece of it. It's a grounder towards short. The throw to first is in time. 
And that'll be a 6-3 for out number one for Bright. So here comes number seven, Mason Winters up to the plate. Winters and another fly out towards Hicks back in the first as he looks to change his luck here, if he can. Facing off against Santos. As he's gonna take a quick time and get reset. It's one out here, top of the third. As here's the pitch from Santos. Winters swings at that one. That'll be strike one. Count goes 0-1. It's a nice breaking ball by Santos. So that was tough to lay off. And I can see why Winters swung at it. It's no balls, one strike, one out. Santos gets set. Here's the pitch to Winters. There's that one. Another breaking ball. That one's going to catch the zone this time, though. That'll be strike two for Winters. Count goes 0-2. Santos gets set, no balls, two strikes, one out. Winters swings at that one, can't make contact. He'll go down swinging as out number two, which is gonna bring up number 15, Brody Miller. He hit a single in the first, was able to make it all the way to third, and then was left stranded there as he couldn't be brought in back in the first inning. As Miller gets set, Santos gets the call. With two outs here at the top of the third, here's the pitch. As Miller watches that one go by, that'll be called for strike one. Count goes 0-1. So no balls, one strike, and two outs. Santos gets the call. Here's the 0-1 pitch. That one's going to be a high fastball eye level for Miller. That'll be ball one. Count goes even now, 1-1. One and one. Patrick Colopy is going to be on deck. He'll be set to bat next if Miller can make his way on base. Santos gets set. One ball, one strike, two outs. Here's the pitch. A swing and a miss by Miller. And that'll be strike two. Count goes one and two. One ball, two strikes, and two outs. Miller at the plate getting ready. Here's the pitch from Santos. As that one's going to be too low. That'll be ball two. Count goes even now, two and two. And Miller... One of the highlights from Tuesday's game, hit a nice home run towards center field, the long 400 center field over at Berger. As here's the 2-2 pitch from Santos, a swing and a grounder foul. Count will stay two and two here for Miller. That our first, our first home run, excuse me, of district play here for the Bulldogs. Fingers crossed for many more if they can. As Santos makes his way back up to the mound. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs. Top of the third, no runners on. As Miller gets set, Santos gets set. Here's your 2-2 pitch. Miller swinging, that's a bouncer towards the San Marcos dugout. Coach Webb showing he still got it as he barehanded that one and tossed it back to Santos. Count's gonna stay two and two. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs. Santos gets set. Here's the pitch to Miller. And a swing and a miss by Miller. And that'll be out number three. And down goes the order for the Bulldogs. One, two, three. And that'll be the top of the third. And again, folks, I apologize for the choppy camera. And I think it's a mixture of the noon playing time and video and Wi-Fi out here in San Marcos and all that fun stuff all combines for a nice choppy video feed. But we do want to give a thank you out to our sponsors when we can. And our Bowie Bulldog sponsor here for baseball, Maxwell Lock and Ritter, serving clients, building relationships, and positively impacting our community. Those are the cornerstones of Maxwell Lock and Ritter and MLNR Wealth Management. With our team of experienced professionals, you're gaining trusted business advisors for your accounting, tax, and wealth management needs in Central Texas. To learn more about how Maxwell Lock and & Ritter and MLNR Wealth Management can help you achieve your personal or business goals, visit us online at www.mlrpc.com. That's www.mlrpc.com. So bottom of the third, 
set to get underway here. Colloping back on the mound here for the Bulldogs. He'll be set to face off against number 24, the designated hitter, Major Pellian. Ryan Hicks in the ninth spot will be batting second and then top of the order with Cannon Webb set to bat third for the Rattlers. Pellian, excuse me. You know, we do our best to get everybody's pronunciation right as Major Pellian makes his way up to the plate. Pellian went 0 for 4 on Tuesday, including three strikeouts and a little grounder towards Easton at the mound as he takes that first one for ball one. One ball, no strikes. Here's the pitch from Colopy. Nice fastball down the middle gets called for strike one. Count goes even now, one and one. Colopy gets set. Here's the pitch to Pelline. A swing and a chopper foul. That'll be strike two for Major Pelline. Count goes one and two. So one ball, two strikes, and no outs. Colopy set. Here's the pitch. A swing and a high fly down the first baseline as Miller able to try to leg it out foul. It's going to bounce fair. As, okay, I was going to say, <laughs> Coach Webb doing a good job of psyching me out as he jumped and signaled fair and kept going. And that is going to be a foul ball. Major will make his way back up to home plate. Count's going to stay one and two here, bottom of the third. So one ball, two strikes, and no outs because it's the leadoff batter here, top of the third. As Major Pelline is up to the plate, Colopy set. Here's your one-two pitch. The swing and a one goes behind him over the fence. That'll be foul. Count will stay one and two, and Major Pelline doing a good job at the plate so far, working this pitch count for Colopy. Yes, here's the pitch. A swing and another high fly foul. Miller's going to watch it go over the fence line down the first baseline. Count will stay one and two. One ball, two strikes, and no outs. Colopy gets set. Here's the pitch to Pelline. A swing and a liner towards Garcia. He gets that one. Throw to Rodriguez in time. And a 4-3 for out number one, which is going to bring up Ryan Hicks, right fielder for the Rattlers. Hicks rocking the mullet, as we've seen a few of them so far this year in district play. Hicks going 0 for 3 on Tuesday with a strikeout, a pop out, and a grounder towards second. As he looks to get his first hit here, the series against Colopy is here's the pitch. One's going to be a little bit too high. That'll be ball one. Count goes one and oh. So one ball, no strikes. One out. Here's the pitch from Colopy. Fastball down the middle. That'll be strike one. Count goes even now, one and one. Number 21, Cannon Webb, top of the order for the Rattlers, is on deck. He'll be batting next after Hicks. As here's the one one pitch from Colopy. A swing and a. Nice high foul goes over the Rattler dugout down the first baseline. That'll be strike two. Count goes one and two. So one ball, two strikes, and one out. Here's the pitch from Colopy to Hicks. As Hicks takes a swing at that one. And that'll be a strikeout swinging for out number two, which is going to bring up center fielder Cannon Webb. He struck out looking back in the first inning. And so far, again, 0 for 3 on Tuesday. So Kenan Webb looking to make some contact if he can here at least. As he looks to face off against Colopy again here in the third. Here's the pitch. Nice low fastball gets called for strike one. Count goes 0 and 1. So no balls, one strike, two outs. Colopy gets set. Here's the pitch to Webb. Another high fly behind goes over the fence line. That'll be strike two. Count goes 0-2. Go, 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 go. 
13. No balls, two strikes, and two outs. As Colopy looking to put down Kenan Webb again if he can. Gets the call. Here's the 0-2 pitch. High fastball going up the ladder, and Webb doing a good job not making an offering. That'll be ball one. Count goes one and two. Colopy, one ball, two strikes. Shakes off the first thing. He doesn't like it. Likes the second call. Here's the pitch. Another swing and another high chopper behind. That'll go foul. Count goes one and two. Making a good job this inning by the Rattler batters. Working the pitch count for Colopy. As Colopy gets set, one ball, two strikes, and two outs. Here's the pitch to Webb. Webb digs in the dirt for that one. A high fly towards Garcia over second. It's going to go behind him to Miller. Miller brings that one in. A fly towards right field. And that'll be out number three. So the order goes down one, two, three for the Rattlers. And that'll do it for the third inning. Three innings down, folks, and we are still knotted up at zero apiece. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back. You're listening to Bulldog Baseball right here on Vibe Live. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vipe.com. Welcome back, folks. Fourth inning set to get underway. Real Texas barbecue starts with the wood, and Rudy's uses 100% oak to smoke their meat. So stop by one of their five Austin area locations for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Or check them out online at rudy's.com to order a group meal for your next family event or just to order dinner to pick up on the way home because we all know how that can be. Coming home from work, forgot to get dinner ready, pick up some Rudy's. They'll have it ready for you. And I usually grab some. I got a couple baseball games in that way I get to call. And I usually stop by their location off the of B Caves, and, or uh, 360, excuse me, and get to pick up some barbecue on my way in. So top of the fourth, Patrick Colopy set to lead off. He had a nice double in the first. As he gets set to face off against Santos again, here's the pitch. Breaking ball gets called for strike one. Count goes 0-1 for Colopy. John Estrada set to bat second with Travis Starkey batting third here in the fourth. Santos set. Here's your 0-1 pitch to Colopy. A swing and a bouncer back towards Santos. A dive and a miss. A barehanded throw to first is in time. Nice job by Cutter Webb, second baseman for the Rattlers. As that's going to be a 4-3 for out number one. As here comes number 11, John Estrada. Estrada. Still looking to get his nickname back if he can. <laughs> he had a pop out towards first that went foul. That was brought in by Wilder in the first. Here's the first pitch from Santos to him. A swing and a chopper behind him goes foul. That'll be strike one. Count goes 0 and 1. So no balls, one strike with one out. As Estrada gets set, swing, and he gets a piece of that one. High fly towards center field. That's right center field as Hicks gets underneath it and misses it in his glove. And having to chase it down is going to be Cannon Webb as Estrada rounds second. He'll make his way over to third and hold up at third. Well, that's going to be an E9, though, for him. So it still won't count as a hit, but a nice way to get on base with one out here in the fourth inning. As here comes catcher Travis Starkey, who Starkey went 0 for 1 with a strikeout swinging back on Tuesday, a rare outing for him. He's usually pretty solid on the mount, on the the uh, at the plate here for the Bulldogs. With John Estrada over in scoring position here at third. And Starkey gets set. 
here's the pitch. A bunt and Starkey. They're going to say that went foul, stayed foul, didn't get past the circle there. That'll be strike one for Starkey. Count goes 0 1. No balls, one strike, and one out. One runner on for the Bulldogs. The Santos gets set. Starkey's set. Santos likes the call. Here's the 0 1 pitch. That one's going to be a high fastball. That'll be ball one. Count goes even at one and one. Ben Merriman hit a triple back in the second. He's set to bat next if Starkey can make his way on base or barring the double play, if you will. As it's one ball, one strike, and one out. Starkey set. Here's the pitch from Santos. A swing and a high fly foul. Into the football stadium to our right, it looked like. That'll be strike two. Count goes one and two. So one ball, two strikes, and one out here for Travis Starkey. John Estrada is over at third. Santos set. Here's your one two pitch. A swing and a miss by Starkey. And that'll be a strikeout swing in for out number two. Which brings up number one, Ben Merriman. Merriman again hit that triple back in the second and wasn't able to make his way across home though as he was left stranded in the inning. Santos getting set. Here's the first pitch to Merriman. That was gonna be in the dirt and man, Anderson again doing a great job of keeping that in front of him and not letting it get away from him. Estrada got about halfway to home and had to turn around and make his way back to third. As we'll get reset and do it again. It's one ball, no strikes, two outs, one runner on. Here's the pitch to Merriman. That one's gonna be too low. That'll be ball two. Count goes two and up. Two balls, no strikes. Merriman up to the plate. Santos getting the call. Merriman with a few pitches to burn too as well. He might sit tight and let these go by. As here's the pitch. Again, in the dirt by Santos. That'll be ball three. Count goes three and oh, and Anderson's gonna have to come up and have a chit chat with Santos up at the mound. As Merriman will make his way over to Coach DeJelia here and we'll have a chit chat here in front of us. But three balls, no strikes, and two outs. Two out rally. Fingers crossed underway here for the Bulldogs. Estrada's over at third. As Merriman gets set. Santos looking for the call. You got it. Here's your 3-0 pitch. Fastball down the middle. Oh, faithful at 3-0. That'll be called for strike one. Count goes 3-1. And here's the 50-50 pitch here, the 3-1 pitch. You know, you're never sure if you're going to swing it or get the call to hold off. We'll see here as Merriman gets set. It's three balls, one strike, and two outs. Here's the pitch from Santos. Another fastball down the middle. That'll be strike two. Merriman thought that was a little too high, but it's a full count now. Three balls, two strikes, two outs, one runner on. And one thing that the Bulldogs are working on is Stop leaving these runners on base as they're in danger of doing it again now. As Santos gets set, here's your 3-2 pitch. As that one's going to be too low. That'll be ball four and runners on the corners for the Bulldogs. As here comes first baseman Danny Rodriguez up to the plate. Rodriguez had a grounder to short in the second. As he looks to hopefully get on base here. Matt Garcia will be on deck if Rodriguez can make his way on base. So two runners on, two outs, as Rodriguez gets set. Estrada's at third, Merriman's over at first. And Merriman with a pretty big lead at first. We'll see if he takes off towards second. And here's the pitch to Rodriguez. And Merriman gonna get caught stealing in a rundown now as he's running, 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 the throw to first. A uh, runner is gonna come across, Merriman's able to get away. Nope, they're gonna call him out. 
So Merriman, the sacrificial lamb, if you will, is he draws the run down between first and second, allowing Estrada to make his way across. So the Bulldogs put one on the board and take a 1-0 lead, but that'll do it for the fourth inning. Or at least top of the fourth. So and a nice job by Merriman. If they would have tagged Merriman before Estrada hit home, that would have been the out and the run wouldn't have counted. But Merriman doing a good job of leading them on and finally keeping enough time to allow Estrada to come across home plate. That'll do it. So bottom of the fourth, set to be underway here at San Marcus Rattler Baseball Stadium. Remember folks, it's First Responder Appreciation Day if you can make it on out. Make your way on, folks. They got, I believe, a fire truck, and they got the rescue tank here set up behind us for the Santa Margaret's Police Department. Bring the kiddos and come check it out. It's pretty cool. It's, it's a good 10 to 12 feet high, so it's a, it's a tank, folks. It's huge. As second baseman number one, Cutter Webb, sets a lead off for the Rattlers here in the bottom of the fourth. Selvin Anderson will be batting second with Johnny Pardo set to bat third. Bulldogs take an early 1-0 lead here in the fourth as Patrick Colopy is going to be back on the mound. Remember, folks, with a win here this afternoon, the Bulldogs do secure a playoff spot. But they got to get that win first. And San Marcos had the bets on fire on Tuesday, bringing across 10 runs against a very good pitching showing by Easton as a high fly ball towards center field as Bright gets underneath it, brings that one in. And Cutter Webb goes down with a fly out towards center for out number one. Which is going to bring up catcher number 20, Selvin Anderson. Anderson had a high, deep pop out towards Matt Garcia at second, and Garcia had to go back, and Miller was right behind him, showing some support. As here's the first pitch from Colopy. That one's going to be outside for ball one. Count goes one and oh. Colopy gets set. Here's the 1-0 pitch. And that one's not going to hit the strike zone there. That'll be ball two. Count goes 2-0. Two so two balls, no strikes, and one out for Colopy as he gets set. Here's the pitch to Anderson. As that one's going to be too low. That'll be ball three. And Colopy falling behind Excuse me, early in the count, 3-0. Three balls, no strikes, one out. Here's the 3-0 pitch to Anderson. He shows bunt. He pulls back in time. It's an inside fastball. As the umpire didn't like some words between Anderson given to Colopy there as he goes over to talk to him. And we're going to have a pinch runner, it looks like. And I believe that's uh, number 16. I'll try to get a name for you. As Coach Webb comes over and apologizes to Coach Jelly, it's Gavin Gomez. There's that first pitch to Johnny Pardo gets called for strike one. Count goes 0-1. So no balls, one strike and one out. One runner on with Gomez over at first. Pardo gets set. He had a single in the second. Here's the pitch. It's a high fastball. That'll be ball one. Count goes even now, one and one. So one ball, one strike, and one out with one runner on. Call up set. Here's the pitch to Pardo. A swing and a miss by Pardo. That'll be strike two. Count goes one and two. So one ball, two strikes, one out. Johnny Pardo's up to the plate. Gavin Gomez is over at first for the Rattlers. As Colopy didn't like the first one. Takes the second. Check over at Gomez. Here's the one-two pitch to Pardo. A swing and a high fly towards Miller over in right field. He gets underneath it and can't bring it in. It's going to draw foul, drop foul, excuse me. So we'll get reset and we'll do it again. 
Count's going to stay one and two here for Pardo. As he slowly makes his way back. And I do like these uniforms that the Rattlers have on. Again, folks, they've got the San Marcos Police Department badge on their left shoulder, the thin blue line American flag on their left sleeve as here's the pitch to Pardo in the dirt for ball two. Count goes even now, two and two. And then they got the San Marcos Fire Department patch on their right shoulder, if I could see that correctly. So very nice uniforms that the team has on. As it's two balls, two strikes, one out, one runner on. Here's the pitch from Call Up B to Pardo. And he swings and gets a piece of that one, a bouncer towards Winters. It's the second, that's the out. The double play is there. And oh no, excuse me, it's not. They're gonna say he was safe. <laughs> you know, folks, I'm wrong, but I can't be wrong that, that, or that often, right? So Gomez will be out number two on the fielder's choice, which will mean Pardo will reach on the fielder's choice to first, which will bring up left fielder number nine, Moses Alva, who flew out towards center, the steal to second. Nice throw down and tag. Starkey to Winters, and they're going to say there was no tag made. And they're going to call Pardo safe at second. As Coach DeGelia says time, and he's going to come out and have a chit shot with our umpire. As they're not going to change their mind as much as Coach DeGelia wants to argue it. So Pardo is going to be, I mean, that I'm, I'm 0 for, I can't be 0 for 3, folks. You know, I'm not that, I'm not that bad. As Pardo will be safe at second. That will be strike one for Alva. And I guess we'll just reset and do it again. So let's get this. It's no balls, one strike, two outs with one runner on second as Pardo is able to miraculously not get called out at second. As Alva gets set, and here's the pitch from Colopy. As that fastball down the middle gets called for strike two. Count goes 0 and 2 for Colopy. So no balls, two strikes, two outs, one runner on. As Colopy calls Tom, he wants Stark to come up to the mound. They want to get some clarification on their calls here. As they get it done and let's get reset and do it again. Again, folks, goldfish, right? Short memory is all you need out there as it's no balls, two strikes, two outs. Colopy a quick check at Pardo on second. He's gonna step off and Pardo's gonna slide back in. As Alva gets set, Colopy set. Here's your 0-2 pitch to Alva. As that one's gonna be too low, that'll be ball one. Count goes one and two. So one ball, two strikes, and two outs with one runner on here for Colopy. As he gets the call, here's the pitch to Alva. And Colopy's gonna step off as Pardo's at second. Dancing around, throwing off Colopy a little bit. As Colopy gets set, not even gonna look at Pardo. Here's the pitch to Alva, swinging a bouncer towards Garcia. He fields that one to throw to first in time. And that'll be out number three. As the Bulldogs able to get out of that one. It's going to be no hits. No errors with one runner left on. And that'll do it for the fourth inning. So four innings down. And the Bulldogs have a one to nothing lead over the San Marcos Rattlers. We'll take a short break, folks. We'll be right back for the fifth inning. You're listening to Bulldog Baseball right here on Vipe Live. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you Vipe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe. 
BYPE.com. BYPE.com. Welcome back, folks. Fifth inning set to get underway. Get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your Academy Sports and Outdoors store. That's Academy Sports and Outdoors, our Vibe Live Spring Sports sponsor this year. As Danny Rodriguez is set to lead off for the Bulldogs here in the top of the fifth. Bulldogs with a one to nothing lead over the San Marcos Rattlers. As Tito Santos is back on the mound. Rodriguez had a ground out towards shortstop back in the second. That was his last time and only time at bat so far this afternoon. As here's the pitch from Santos. That's going to be low. That'll be hit the zone. That'll be called for strike one. Count goes 0 and 1. So no balls, one strike, and no outs here for Rodriguez. As he gets set, Santos likes the call. Here's the pitch. That one's going to be in the dirt. That'll be ball one for Rodriguez. Count goes even at one and one. So Rodriguez leading off here for the Bulldogs in the fifth. Matt Garcia is set to bat second with top of the order due up after him. Nathaniel Bright batting third. As here's the one one pitch to Rodriguez. A swing and a chopper comes right over here to Garcia. That'll be strike two. Count goes one and two. So one ball, two strikes, no outs. Santos set. Here's the one-two pitch to Rodriguez, and he swings and gets a piece of that one. That one goes foul. In protection mode is Rodriguez. Anything that might be deemed a strike, he's going to have to swing and try to hit. As it's one ball, two strikes, Rodriguez gets set. Santos getting the call. And here's the pitch. A swing and a hit. That's a big hit towards center field. And that's going to be brought in with ease by Cannon Webb, as that'll be out number one. So Matt Garcia making his way back out. He hit a little bouncer towards Santos back in the uh, second, excuse me, as he was thrown out on that grounder. Looking to change his luck here this afternoon if he can. Remember, Thaniel Bright's going to be on deck, top of the order due up for the Bulldogs as he gets set. Here's the pitch to Garcia. Inside fastball, as that'll be ball one. Count goes one and oh. So one ball, no strikes, one out, top of the fifth. No runners on, and Bulldogs with a one to nothing lead over the San Marcos Rattlers. Here's the pitch from Santos, as a bunt is shown by Garcia. And that was quite a bunt, as that went way over the cage behind him into the stands. That'll be strike one. Count goes even at one and one. So one ball, one strike, and one out. Santos set. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch to Garcia. Swings and another liner foul. That'll be strike two. Count goes one and two. As Garcia is going to go into protection mode now. Santos set. One ball, two strikes. Here's the pitch to Garcia. Uh, that one's going to be a little too inside. That'll be ball two. Count goes two and two. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Here's the pitch. A swing and a miss by Garcia. Santos goes up the ladder. That'll be out number two, which brings up top of the order, Thaneo Bright. Bright so far 0 for 2 on the afternoon. He had a fly out towards right field and then a grounder towards short in the third. As he gets set to face off against Santos here, top of the fifth with two outs and no runners on. Santos with the pitch. 
That was going to be a little bit too high. That'll be ball one. Count goes 1-0. and One ball, no strikes, two outs. Santos gets set. Here's the 1-0 pitch to Bright. Swing and a little bouncer behind goes foul. That'll be strike one for Bright. Count goes even now, 1-1. One and one. one ball, one strike. Two outs. Daniel Bright's currently at the plate. No runners on. Bright's able to make his way on base. Mason Winters will make his way back up to the plate. As Bright gets set, Santos waiting for the call. One ball, one strike. Here's the pitch. That one's going to be low, and that'll be ball two. Count goes two and one. So two balls, one strike, two outs, and no runners on. Top of the fifth, currently underway here at Rattler Baseball Stadium in San Marcos, Texas. As here's the pitch from Santos, a swing and a miss by Bright. And that'll be strike two. Count goes even now, two and two. So two balls, two strikes, two outs. Santos gets set, here's the two-two pitch to Bright. As they're gonna say that one hit the zone. Bright will go down looking for out number three. And the order here in the fifth for the Bulldogs goes down one, two, three. But that'll do it. So bottom of the fifth set to get underway as Colopy makes his way back out to the mound to pitch for the Bulldogs. Reagan Shomel set to lead off. Steven Wilder will be batting second along with Major Pelline. Batting third. Five, five. All right, let's give a big thank you to some of our sponsors. As again, folks, I'm a little behind due to our odd little delay. But Big Tuna Interactive, one of our Bulldog baseball sponsors this spring. Big Tuna Interactive specializes in Drupal website development and site optimizations. Reach out today and see how Big Tuna Interactive can help make your online marketing programs more valuable and can help you achieve your goals in 2021. BigTunaInteractive.com. And then, of course, we're going to sneak this in here, folks. As you know that I like is this day in baseball history. Let's see here. Ah, here we go. So April 24th, we'll go 1917. Fenway Park. Yankee left-hander George Morgridge no-hits the Red Sox 2-1. to one. The South Paul's performance is the first no-no in franchise history and the first ever that was thrown in the Boston ballpark. So bottom of the fifth set to get underway again, folks. Reagan Schumel set to lead off for the Rattlers. He had a strikeout swinging in the second. So, so far he is hitless in the series. Looking to change his luck a little bit. Now, I apologize. He is one hit, a double in the fourth back in game two. So looking to add on to that one, if you will, as that first one gets called for strike one. Count goes 0-1. And, and Colopy, a little inside. That'll be ball one. Count goes even 1-1. Moving quickly there on the mound as it's one ball, one strike here for Colopy. He gets set. Here's the pitch to Schmel. As he went across, that'll be... Strike two, count goes one and two. Colopy going up the ladder against the freshman. Able to draw the swing. It's one ball, two strikes. As Colopy gets set, and here's the pitch. As that's going to hit the dirt way in front of home plate, and that'll be ball two. And I say dirt, the turf, if you will, so you can't see anything fly in the air. But that'll bring your count even at two and two. Here's the pitch. Shamal gets a piece of that one. Winters at short gets it. The throw to first. In time to Rodriguez. So that'll be out number one. Steven Wilder will make his way up to the plate now for the Rattlers. He had a ground out towards second over to Garcia. Back in the second. Look at that. As here's the first pitch from Colopy. High fastball. That'll be ball one. Count goes one and home. 
So one ball, no strikes here for Colopy. As here's the pitch to Walder. That one's going to be a fastball low. It'll be called for strike one. Count goes one and one. One ball, one strike, and one out. Bottom of the fifth. Here's the pitch from Colopy. Fastball gets hits the zone inside. That'll be strike two. Count goes one and two. One ball, two strikes. Here's the pitch from Colopy. And a little bouncer that's fielded by Winters. A throw to first in time. Another 6-3 for out number two, which is going to bring up designated hitter number 24, Major Pelin for the Rattlers. He had a ground out to second in the third. Let's see if he hits this one towards Winters and gives him the hat trick here in the fifth inning. As here's the first pitch from Colopy. That's going to be a little bit inside. That'll be ball one. Count goes one and oh. One ball, no strikes, two outs. Here's the pitch from Colopy. That one's going to be low and inside. That'll be ball two. Count goes two and oh for Pauline. Colopy gets set. Two balls, no strikes, and two outs. Here's the pitch to Major Pauline. That one's going to be another fastball inside for ball three. And Colopy falling behind here in the count 3-0. As he gets set. Three balls, no strikes. Old Faithful heater down the middle. Here it comes. That one's going to be a little bit too high, though. As that'll be a walk for Pauline. He'll make his way over to first, which will bring up Number 11, right fielder Ryan Hicks. Colopy had a strikeout against Hicks back in the third. Got him swinging for out number two as he looks to face off with one runner on now. As Colopy gets set. And here's the pitch to Hicks. That one's going to be called for strike one. Count goes 0 and 1. No ball, one strike, two outs, one runner on. Major Pelin's over at first for the Rattlers. Ryan Hicks at the plate. Here's the pitch. As that one hits the zone as well, that'll be strike two. Count goes 0 and 2. No balls, two strikes, and two outs. One runner on, Colopy gets set. Here's the pitch. A really high fastball. That's above the helmet of Hicks. One to burn for Colopy's. That'll be ball one. Count goes one and two. One ball, two strikes here for Hicks as Colopy gets set. Here's the pitch. A swing and a high fly towards Miller in right field. It is going to go foul. Miller gets underneath it, brings it in. As that'll be out number three. As Miller is able to pull that one into foul territory. So no hits, no errors, and one runner left on. And that'll do it for the fifth inning as the Bulldogs maintain their one to nothing lead over the San Marcos Rattlers. And it seems my little music player here is all frozen. So we are no longer going to take any more breaks. We're just going to hang out together and have a good time. But innings are done and we're getting a switch over. So let's give a shout out to another one of our sponsors. Let's go with Mogul and Purcell Financial. With over 40 years of experience in financial services, Mogul and Purcell Financial can help you address your needs of today and for many years to come. Mogul and Purcell Financial live for today, plan for tomorrow. As Tito Santos is going to be back up on the mound for the Rattlers. Set to lead off is going to be number seven, Mason Winters, for the Bulldogs. Brody Miller will be batting second with Patrick Colopy batting third. And pitch count not too bad for Colopy or Santos. Santos sitting at 81 pitches so far this afternoon. Colopy at 85. Uh, 110 is our limit are the max that we're looking at here for our high school level. So still 
you know, got an inning or two left, seeing how they look. As Santos looks to face off against Winters. Winters so far is 0 for 2 on the afternoon. He had a fly out towards right field and a strikeout swinging in the third. Here's the first pitch from Santos. And that one's going to be, looks like a little too outside. That'll be ball one. Count goes 1-0. and so one ball, no strikes here for Winters. As Santos gets set, and here's the pitch. That one's going to be a high fastball. That'll be ball two. Count goes 2-0. Oh. So two balls, no strikes. Winters is up at the plate here for the Bulldogs. No runners on. As Santos gets set. Here's the 2-0 pitch. A swing and a liner towards center field. And that's going to be brought in by Cannon Webb for out number one. You know, we have to put fly out in our scoreboard, our little scorebooks here. Because, you know, it went out in the outfield. So it's always a fly out. But that was just a line drive towards Webb there in center. So nice hit by Winters. Just couldn't get the drop he was looking for. As number 15, right fielder Brody Miller. It's going to make his way out, hit a single in the first, and had a strikeout swinging in the third. As that first pitch from Santos is going to be a low zone strike called for strike one. So no balls, one strike. Miller getting set. Santos gets the call. No runners on with one out. Here's the pitch. A swing and a liner down the first baseline is going to go foul. That'll be strike two for Miller. Count goes 0-2. So no balls, two strikes, and one out, no runners on. Brody Miller's up at the plate. Santos gets the call. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Is that's going to hit the dirt in front of home plate? That'll be ball one. Pitches to burn for Santos. As Miller's going to be in protection mode now here at the plate. As he gets set, Santos getting the call. Here's your 1-2 pitch. And another bouncer down the first baseline goes foul. Count's going to stay one and two here for Miller. So one ball, two strikes, one out. Miller gets set. Santos set. Here's the pitch. And that's going to hit home plate in the turf. That'll be ball two. Count goes even at two and two. And I say home plate in the turf because it's like colored in the turf there at home plate. I don't know if you can, I don't think you can see it here. It's not an actual plate. It's just a white spot. Now the bags around, you know, first, second, and third, those are actual, you know, bags, but nothing there. Here's the 2-2 pitch to Miller. He swings and gets a piece of that one. That goes foul behind him. Count will stay two and two. So two balls, two strikes, and one out. Top of the sixth here for the Bulldogs as they hold on to a slim one to nothing lead over the Rattlers. Santos set. Here's the 2-2 pitch. As that one's going to be low. Count goes full 3-2 now. As Miller's worked his way back in the count. Able to make it full as it's three balls, two strikes. Santos likes the call. Miller's set. Here's your full count pitch. As that one's going to be inside. Almost gets Miller in the leg, but can't quite get the nick he's looking for. <laughs> so he'll get walked on over to first, which will bring up number 13, Patrick Colopy. Now, Colopy has a, you know, there is no DH right now for the Bulldogs since Colopy is pitching. We've seen him get moved over to first when we've had a relief pitcher come in for him. So most likely that will be the case here. When that switch is made, as Colopy so far is one for two on the afternoon against Santos. He hit a double in the first and hit a grounder towards second in the fourth. So one runner on, one out. As Colopy gets set to face off against Santos again. Santos doing a quick check over at Miller at first. He's set. Here's the pitch to Colopy. A swing and a liner hits the mound and does a weird bounce. Brought in by the shortstop and the throw. And they're going to say he tagged up on Miller.
And they're going to say that he caught it, slid, and tagged him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so Miller will get tagged on the sliding catch by Johnny Pardo, who I guess got his glove enough in the air to graze Brody Miller on his way to second. And then he also throws it to first to get out number three. So uh, again, kind of an odd inning there, but that'll do it, folks. So John Estrada will be set to lead off in the seventh for the Bulldogs. As Collip, is going to be back on the mound. Nope, take that back. That's going to be, that uh, looks like Ryan Corbett is going to be up on the mound for the Bulldogs. Give me one second as my phone is overheating as well. That is going to be Ryan Corbett. So Corbett will come in here in the sixth inning. He'll be looked to face off top of the order for the Rattlers as Cannon Webb will be set to lead off with Cutler Webb, Cutter Webb, excuse me, batting second. Selvin Anderson, catcher, will be batting third. And Corbett's usually brought in the last inning or two to close out. And looks like that's the case here, folks, as he makes his way over. And it looks like Rodriguez is going to stay over at first. I know Rodriguez has been called to pitch every so often, but that'll do it for Colopy here this afternoon. As here comes number 21, Cannon Webb. He's 0 for 2 on the afternoon with a strikeout looking in the first and a fly out towards Brody Miller in right field in the third. As there's the first pitch from Corbett. That'll get called for ball one. Count goes 1 and 0. As a quick time is called, you see Webb coming on over to Coach Webb to have a chit chat here by third base. Colopy is going to end his afternoon with one, two, three. It's like three strikeouts. Two walks. Two hits. And no runs. And I got no errors. Little our board up top. Yep, says no errors. So, yeah, we're, we're all right. Is that next one? Webb gets a piece of it. That'll be strike one. Count goes even at one and one. Next pitch gets by Starkey. That'll be ball two. Count goes two and one here for Webb. So two balls, one strike. Here at the bottom of the sixth. Cannon Webb's up to the plate. Here's the pitch from Corbett. They're going to say that got a piece of him. As Coach Webb is not happy. So Webb will make his way over to first. As Coach Webb's going to go check on his player there. As our umpire isn't happy about, I guess, chit-chat between catcher and batter. You know, the fun banter that happens at the plate. I guess it's not fun anymore. <laughs> We're going to get reset. So Webb is going to get hit by a pitch. He'll make his way over to first. And here comes Cutter Webb, second baseman. He is 0 for 2 on the afternoon. The liner towards Garcia at second. And a fly out towards Bright over in center field. As he looks to face off against Corbett with one runner on and no outs in the sixth. As that was going to be a little too high. That'll be called for ball one. Count goes 1-0. Oh. 
Well, it's getting a little chippy out now at the, on the field as Corbett gets set. One ball, no strikes. A swing and a chopper behind goes foul. That'll be strike one for Webb. Count goes one and one. So one ball, one strike, and no outs. Cutter Webb at the plate. Cannon Webb is over at first. Corbett gets set. Here's your 1-1 pitch. And a throw to first. Tag's not going to be in time. And we'll get reset and we'll do it again. One ball, one strike. Here's the pitch. A swing and a miss by Webb and that'll be strike two. Count goes one and two. One ball, two strikes here for Corbett. No outs, one runner on. As Cannon Webb is over at first for the Rattlers. We have seen him take off towards second as he did the last game. We'll see if he decides to do it again. As Corbett gets set. Here's the pitch. And no, another throw to first. Rodriguez gets it, but no tag made. And we'll get reset and do it again. Corbett gets set. Here's the pitch. And that one's going to be a little too outside for our umpire. That's going to be ball two. Count goes even now, two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch from Corbett. A swing and a high fly down the first baseline will go foul. Nobody can get to it as that dropped between Miller and Rodriguez. Count will stay even at two and two, and we're just going to reset and do it again. As it's two balls, two strikes, no outs. Bottom of the sixth here in San Marcos, Texas. Here's the throw to first. is not in time. No tag is going to be made by Rodriguez. No attempt at all. And that rumble you hear, folks, is that San Marcos Police Department tank that is set up behind us. Looks like they're taking off for the afternoon. As here's the pitch from Corbett. A swing and a miss by Webb. As they'll go down swinging for out number one. And Corbett saying, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. Is going to bring up number 20, Selvin Anderson, up to the plate with one out and one runner on. Anderson is 0 for 1 on the afternoon. He was walked in the fourth and then hit a pop out towards Winters at short in the first. Another throw to first, and that one beat the runner, but Rodriguez wasn't able to make the tag. We'll get reset here with one out, one runner on. Bottom of the sixth. And the Bulldogs with a one to nothing lead over the Rattlers. Tying run is at first as here's the pitch. That one's going to be a little too inside. That'll be ball one. Count goes one and oh. So one ball, no strikes. One out. Anderson set. Corbett gets set. Here's the pitch. And a chopper behind goes foul. That'll be strike one for Anderson. Count goes even at one and one. So one ball, one strike, one out, one runner on. Anderson is set, and Corbett's going to step off and throw to first. Again, unable to get Webb in the tag. Cannon Webb is a lone runner on now for the Rattlers. As here's the 1-1 one -one pitch from Corbett. That one's going to be a high fastball. Gets called for ball two. Count goes two and one. Coach DeJelly is going to call a quick time and make his way out to the mound, as is Travis Starkey. As the runner, the batter, and the next two batters make their way up to have a chit-chat with Coach Webb here in front of us. Coach Jellia says we're good to go. Two balls, one strike, and one out. Bottom of the sixth. One runner on for the Rattlers. As Anderson makes his way back up to the plate.
Corbett. Doing a quick check over at Webb at first. Here's your 2-1 pitch. A swing and a high fly towards Miller in right field. He comes up to get it, gets underneath it, and brings that one in for out number two. So with two outs and one runner on, number five, Johnny Pardo is going to make his way up to the plate for the Rattlers. He is one for one on the afternoon with a single in the second, and he had that weird fielder's choice in the fourth that he was able to reach and beat the run out, apparently. As he looks to face off against Corbett for the first time here this afternoon. As Pardo is set, Corbett set, here's the pitch. And Noah throw to first, no tag, is not in time. As Rodriguez tosses it back. Always scary to see those tosses to first like that. As if it's not on the money, it can go sideways very quickly. As Corbett gets set with two outs and a run runner on. Here's the pitch to Pardo. Fastball thrown. The run to second is not going to be in time as Winters was able to get there. As Starkey is looking for an interference call. That'll be strike one for Pardo. Count goes 0-1. Nice throw down by Starkey. As he had to reach around Pardo there to get, and that's what you hear our fans yelling, interference, interference at home plate. Not going to get the call, though, from our umpire. As Corbett gets set with no balls and one strike, here's the pitch. Another swing and a miss by Pardo, as that'll be strike two, as he cannot catch up to that fastball from Corbett. So with no balls, two strikes, two outs, and one runner on, Corbett gets set, Pardo taking his time, he gets set. Here's the 0-2 pitch from Corbett. That one's gonna be in the dirt. Webb is gonna take off early and make his way over to third. So able to steal his way to third now with the tying run and scoring position for the Rattlers. As Ken Webb is over at first. It's one ball, two strikes and two outs. Corbett gets set, Pardo is set. Here's your 1-2 pitch. And that's going to be a little too low for our umpire in the back. That'll be ball two. Count goes two to two. So two balls, two strikes, two outs. Pardo gets set. Corbett shaking off the first one, likes the second. Ken Webb's that third, waiting to come home. Here's the pitch. A swing and a high fly towards right field that's going to curve foul. It'll drop down. Miller unable to chase it down. Count will stay two and two, and we'll reset and do it again. There's Johnny Pardo, again, up to the plate here for the Rattlers. He's getting set, tying run over at third in Cannon Webb. Ryan Corbett gets set, it's two balls, two strikes, and two outs. Corbett gets set. Here's the pitch to Pardo. Pardo swings and gets a high fly towards right center field. Miller trying to leg that one out. It's going to go over the head of Miller, and it'll bounce over. It'll be in double rule as Webb is going to make his way across. That'll be a double, an RBI double for Pardo. And we are now tied up at one here in the sixth inning as that run comes across for the Rattlers. as Pardo comes over and gets a bunch of high fives. That was a nice hit and a nice bounce over the fence line there at the 320, 330, uh, 340 mark there, which is gonna bring up number nine, left fielder Moses Alva, who is 0 for 2 on the afternoon. As here's the first pitch from Corbett, high fastball gets called for ball one. Count goes one and zero. Alva had a fly out towards Bright over at center field in the second, and then a grounder towards Garcia in the fourth. Yet to get a hit or make his way on base as here's the 1-0 pitch. A swing and a miss by Alva gets called for strike one. Count goes even at one and one. One ball, one strike, two outs, and the go-ahead run over at second. Here's the pitch. A swing and another high fly towards center field. Bright legging this one out. Gets underneath it, and he's able to pull that one in for out number three. And a big sixth inning. 
for the Rattlers as they get one hit, no errors, one runner left on, and one run comes across, and we are knotted up at one. And here comes the seventh inning, folks. Looking like if no runs come across, we might go into extra innings. We'll see. Uh, we are going to stick it here, though, as, again, my wonderful computer is freezing up and acting crazy. Be sure to send old Deandra our QA a message and tell her, hey, what's up with this computer that AJ's got? And she'll send it over to, to Merle, our broadcast director, and say, hey, get AJ a better computer, right? Let's go. We want a better, we want a good stream and we want stuff to work. <laughs> They're all listening, hence why I get to make fun of them. So six innings down, folks. We're knotted up at one. And let's give a big thank you to one of our other sponsors here, Plucker's Wing Bar. Be sure to visit one of the seven Austin area locations today. Currently, we are offering online delivery and curbside pickup from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. That's Plucker's Wing Bar, where we promise to have the beer ice cold and the wings piping hot. One of your Bowie Bulldog baseball sponsors here this spring. Number 11, John Estrada sets a lead off for the Bulldogs. As he was able to reach on an error in the fourth, and he's the lone run that came across on the throwdown from Merriman. He also had a pop out towards first in the first. As he looks to face off against Tito Santos, who gets the call again here in the sixth. His pitch count's getting up there as that first one is swing. It's a high fly towards the San Marcos dugout, and it gets behind him. That'll be strike one for Estrada. Count goes 0-1. Santos about 16 pitches away from hitting the limit here, and once he hits it, he'll have to finish out and be done for the day. So we'll most likely see a new pitcher in the next inning if it goes that far as that one will be called for ball one. Count goes even now, one and one. Top of the seventh, currently underway here in San Marcos, Texas, folks, as the Rattlers and the Bulldogs are battling that in a much closer game as Estrada swings and gets a piece of that one. It's going to go way foul, though. That'll be strike two, count goes one and two. Game one went 10 to four, the way of the Rattlers and the Bulldogs looking for some revenge, hoping to split the series and guarantee a playoff spot if they can come away with the win here. As Santos gets set, here's a pitch to Estrada. That's gonna hit home. All right, folks, sorry about that. Looks like our everything overheated, our hotspot, our computer, and even my cell phone and iPad overheated, but we were able to get back and I'm stringing off of a, a phone hotspot, but Ryan Hicks is up to the plate here for the Rattlers. 